The recording and slides will be posted to our B drive after this event. Uh, if you're not already on our mailing list or our um, calendar invite list, you can sort of put your name in chat, we'll pick you up there. And before I introduce today's presenter, I wanted to plug, we have um, the presentation, we meet every, the first Friday of every month and June 4th's presentation, we're proud to present Luis Rodriguez, the director of Cal Student Central, to, to talk about measuring student satisfaction, exploring qualitative and quantitative methods to measure student satisfaction and improve their operations. So we hope that is in your calendar already. But for today, we're very excited to welcome David Sorrell, the um, Mobility Alternative Transportation Manager and Campus Transportation Demand Management Administrator whoo, of Parking and Transportation, who's gonna take us through the results of the Fall 2020 Campus and Community COVID and Transportation Survey. Since the shelter in place was enacted in March, 2020, transfer ridership to and from the campus has dropped. Then also in the entire Bay Area. So as the campus is ramping up uh, plans for operations for fall 2021, PNT released the survey to the community to figure out the necessity of AC transit and bear transit services, how users feel comfortable about using transit during the pandemic, and what parking transportation as well as AC Transit can do to ensure that riders can come back to transit. So please welcome uh, by show of in the reactions, heart applause or any other great emoji, welcome Dave Sorrell. Thank you very much. You know, I will also take booze and, um, you know, booze, hisses and, uh, you know, blunt objects coming my way probably at the end of this presentation. I kid. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, David Sorrell. I'm the Transportation Demand Management Administrator here at Cal. Uh, I've been overseeing this program for about four years and a, a month, um, making sure that we have, all, you know, decent alternative and active transportation options to get around campus. Um, basically, my background has been in public transit and in parking, uh, all told 15 years, uh, stemming from when I was a baby, in, 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 you know, sophomore in college, uh, going into local government and, you know, kind of branching out towards parking policy uh, and public transportation. Um, my, you know, my background too, in addition to being here at Cal is, you know, Having done transit planning, having done TDM uh, for two different transit agencies, both in Chicago and the Bay Area, but also, you know, working on different types of ways that we can make transit more equitable um, and making sure that, you know, there are different ways for folks to get around, but it's overall, it's to scare folks into not driving. Um, what we found out over the last 400 days is that public transit has taken a major hit on how uh, we get around. Uh, most of us have been working from home over the last 400 days. And what we want is to get an understanding uh, using these campus results, or rather our survey, to make sure that you know what we're doing is focusing on the right things, uh, deprioritizing on things or transit concepts that might not be as important as we ramp back up, but to use things like this as a way for us to kind of see how, oh, excuse me, the community can be able to um, understand, you know, how important transit is and how can we be able to use this as kind of a uh, advocacy leverage, meaning that if you are, you know, a transit user as part of the community, uh, and if you want to get back on the transit, what are your best concerns? What are your main concerns? What are the things that you need uh, the transit agencies to do in order for you all to come back? Um, and so I will be charged with kind of this return to campus uh, approach, which is, you know, transit is safe, transit is, uh, for, you know, we're, we're trying to get the frequency back, but uh, transit is safe. Everyone's masked. There's, you know, hand sanitizer dispensers all over the place. Um, you know, moving away from that, you know, six feet distance to three feet, three feet to zero. Um, you know, it, and that's going to take some time. And you know, working with, say, not only the students but the employees, uh, you guys are just as critical because we want to make sure that we have those options available. So I'll get started with this uh, survey um, and kind of just see where we are. 
Um, so the summary of our collection period, uh, it was initially from the start of the fall semester, which was August 24th, uh, through about Halloween. Uh, what we found was that we had about 250 respondents when we first started this entire process. And we realized that perhaps we need to do a different um, approach when it comes to outreach and communication. Uh, and so what we've done was that we kind of uh, worked with our vice chancellor of administration uh, to kind of do an all uh, student, all campus email to kind of address, um, you know, we want to get this feedback so that we can be able to take to our different partners. Uh, and so as a result, we extended the survey for another month, another five weeks uh, to December 8th. During that time, we saw the number of respondents increase from two, uh, 250 to just over 2,400, uh, which is a good sample to play off of. Um, I, you know, uh, I'll talk about what that what that means uh, as far as maybe doing another one, but it kind of just shows that you know folks that have been taking transit uh, shows how important it is, and and you'll kind of see the differences where it comes from, like location as well. Um, so we mentioned with outreach, um, and so my interns have done a really good job with not only creating kind of the uh, Instagram, Twitter, social media approach, uh, but we've done a lot of outreach to both our uh, ASCC senators, graduate assembly uh, folks. Uh, we have a newsletter that folks can be able to uh, sign up for, and we send them, we ping them every now and again for different types of uh, monthly updates. Uh, we also put the information on our uh, pt.berkeley.edu website. Uh, different um, identity groups, such as the Black Student Union, um, the Residence Assembly, TSRC, different student clubs uh, that are on campus. And this is just a sample of who we've been able to reach out to over the course of the um, engagement period. Uh, so you look at the breakdown here. And so what we've seen here is that a lot of the grad students had a say in the matter. Um, you know, it, it, when it comes down to the way that things were broken down, a lot of the students have responded. Uh, their commute patterns are significantly different than, say, the undergrads. Um, and then we also had Berkeley staff, professional students, and then that little sliver, uh, let's see, let me put a pen here. Uh, the little sliver here, um, that's the community. Uh, so it was available to the entire <clears throat> UC Berkeley community as well as, you know, uh, the Berkeley community at large. And so, <clears throat> as you can tell, a lot of the students had done it. Um, and then we looked at the zip codes for a lot of our uh, respondents on both a local as well as a uh, East Bay regional uh, approach. So we had a lot of folks uh, within the inner East Bay as well as like Walnut Creek. And there have been a couple of other points of interest too. And that kind of shows what we should probably be looking at um, as far as like, you know, how do you get from campus uh, to home if your, your initial uh, service is not AC transit? Um, you know, and the thing is we've got 27 different transit agencies in nine counties. So you're not gonna have just an AC transit route. You're probably gonna take BART and then you're gonna take probably Soul Trans from El Cerrito uh, to Vallejo, right? Or you're gonna take BART, you know, all the way to Walnut Creek, which is another transit agency. Or you're gonna take it to Pittsburgh and Antioch, which is another transit agency. Or you're gonna go down here to maybe Dublin. Oh, let's see, go this way. Uh, Dublin and Pleasanton. Uh, which is served by one, two uh, different other transit agencies. So, you know, when it's not just your home transit agency, but also when you look at different types of other uh, routes or different types of other transit agencies, the fare products are significantly different. Um, and as a result, you don't know what's going on. And that creates kind of a confusion where, you know, you're, faced with multiple decisions on economics where you don't want to spend too much money on, you know, five different fare products when you can probably just drive for $10 or, you know, eight to $10 a day. Um, and so that's kind of the, you know, the causation and the correlation that we can kind of 
identify. But if you're within Oakland, Berkeley, El Cerrito, Richmond, um, you've got BART and you've got AC Transit. And it's pretty solid. I mean, it's not like New York solid, but it's it's good as it's going to get. Um, and of course, if you're within San Francisco, you can basically go to BART and then it's a one seat ride. We call that one seat ride because you know you're going uh, directly to the campus from your uh, from your San Francisco location unless you take many and all bets are off. Uh, what we found out here too, is that a lot of our participants are coming in from different parts of the state. So we do have some outliers in Chico. We do have outliers in the Central Valley. We've got a lot of concentration down here from you know Oxnard and Santa Barbara, all the way down to Oceanside, San Diego and the border. This is going to be important for me as an administrator because when we, um, you know, rethought and re did a micro revision of our uh, TDM transportation demand management uh, strategic plan, we thought, how can we get folks that don't are not necessarily from the immediate Bay Area to different parts of the state? Uh, and so we tend to focus some of our concentration on other parts of the state other partners such as Amtrak and Flixbus, uh, as well as different opportunities for carpooling. And so that's just kind of an overview of like where folks are coming from. And of course, don't forget the Sacramento Valley and the San Joaquin Valley. So we do have enough people coming from all different points of the state. And so my role is like, how can I get you guys around, uh, hopefully without clogging up I-5 or Highway 99? So we asked our students, we asked our population, you know, all the transportations that they've used during the past quote unquote six months. So, you know, if you've used it in May or March of 2020 through the time that, you know, everyone uh, had been sent home uh, or even up to the point where now it's safe to do so, uh, we asked our folks, what are the transportations that have been used over the last few times? And so uh, the majority of folks had noticed or mentioned that they've used AC Transit to, to get around um, BART walking, uh, especially for folks that, are, that live relatively close. TNC, so TNC use had been, you know, a thing prior to the pandemic. Uh, Bear Transit, bike, uh, we even got Gig Car Share, which has been a very good partner with us. Uh, teleworking is, is a big option. Uh, Amtrak, Zipcar, Caltrain, uh, electric scooters, bay wheels, flex bus, skateboard. So we did give our, our uh, respondents an option to add additional items and we categorized it as such. Uh, so we talked about our bear transit services and our bear transit service for, for those of you that are new um, or not familiar, that's our shuttle system that serves uh, the perimeter of campus, uh, different parts of the hill area. Um, and we offer a nighttime safety shuttle to get uh, folks and students uh, around the perimeter serving both the north and the south sides of campus. And so we asked the respondents how important bear transit service is to them. Uh, we scaled it from uh, you know one to five, or at least from extremely important on down to not at all very important. And so what we've come up with is that you know those that had you know ex it listed extremely very and somewhat important that takes a good chunk of the um, of the pie chart, and that's roughly uh, let's see the forty percent. Uh, about two thirds of the respondents said that bear transit is actually a valued tool um, when it comes to commuting and when uh, you know serving the campus. And so that's important. We take that as, as a good thing that you know our shuttles get you to and from the BART station. It gets you to different parts of the campus. Uh, the students had voted for a uh, to continue their class pass uh, fees so that we can add a bear transit service going in the opposite direction, meaning going counterclockwise on the campus, uh, serving south side and going north and heading down uh, downhill on Hearst. Then we talk about AC transit, same scale, different types of, you know, how important is AC transit service to you. For everyone's um, context, we provide 13, or AC Transit provides 13 routes um, that serves the campus. Six out of the 13 operate before COVID, 15 minutes or better service. Now, 
uh, nowadays we're looking at more like 20 to 25 or 30 minutes or better in week uh, weekend services also cut off, but uh, I'll talk about that later. So, you know, when you have basically 88%, an overwhelming majority that found, you know, AC transit really extremely and very important, that's going to be, you know, critical to us as a university, um, you know, with 55,000 folks and to the district that wants ridership, that has, you know, these partnerships, it kind of shows this relationship has been working. Now, the question is, how do we get from what we see now to uh, June, July, August, and September when everyone starts coming back. And so just kind of does uh, bookmark that for a second. Um, if you used bear transit service uh, over the last six months, um, please list the routes that you most frequently use. So we gave them all the routes that you've seen here, plus the, I have not taken bear transit. Uh, you know, I can tell you that we have not operated Richmond Field since March. We have not really have operated Central Campus, uh, as well as Night Safety North, um, only because that, you know, the demand has been very low, but we, at the same time, we do acknowledge that if you've taken it prior to the pandemic, it's, it's probably just as important. Um, the thing is that with Richmond Field, um, you know, that's a, it's kind of an expensive route to operate and there's very few riders that are on there. However, let's say the reverse perimeter, the hill route, the night safety south, and uh, the classic perimeter at the top, um, we do notice that a lot of folks both take, you know, the, the, the perimeter as an essential service, uh, night safety as one of those routes that, you know, that provides the overnight service um, and getting around is just as important. And, you know, despite the fact that we have 216 respondents for the Hill, I will say that the Hill is a, a needed route to get up, you know, to Lawrence Hall of Science, basically because um, you know, there's no really dense uh, density to justify like a long time route such as AC Transit, but they do provide service as well. So we want to make sure that there's adequate lifeline service to get up and down the hill. Uh, next slide. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we, what we've done here, uh, basically all the respondents from up here uh, 51B, 6, 52F, 7, 79, 36, 18, 12, 88, 65, 67. Those routes all collectively serve Berkeley. And so those were the, um, the main ones that we've put on there on the, on the, uh, the survey that we did. Uh, we left out other as an option. I do not or have not taken AC Transit as another option. Uh, we've taken down uh, what you see in front of you is only routes with more than 20 responses have been listed. I'll explain why. Um, because a lot of the respondents know that the Berkeley Center routes are what you're going to take the most. Uh, if you've not taken AC Transit, that's also valid. And of course, if you've, you know, over the last six months, if you've taken like Muni or uh, maybe not even, you know, BART to Muni or BART to Golden Gate Transit, um, we've noticed that, we flagged that. But also when it comes down to uh, the other routes, you see these three routes down here, 72, 51, A, and 80, those do not directly serve the campus. What we found is that these routes connect with the Berkeley focus routes or connect with BART stations, um, not only within North Oakland, South Berkeley, uh, but also, you know, we've had a couple of respondents uh, say that they connect with Golden Gate Transit at El Cerrito. Uh, we've had respondents uh, take Route 73, 33, and, um, you know, the 40, and those serve East Oakland. Um, 72 serves the west side of Berkeley along San Pablo, uh, connects with other AC transit routes. 51A uh, is Broadway um, that serves, uh, that connects Alameda with downtown Oakland and North Oakland uh, and connects with the 51B at Rock Ridge. In Route 80 is a route that serves Ashby Avenue uh, through Northwest Berkeley uh, up into uh, North, uh, I think it's El Cerrito, and that route has been suspended. But what you see here is that folks do rely on the other services because the students, they pay for the pass. Um, that's an unlimited bus pass that you can use in AC Transit. 
uh, the employees, they had, had similar passes. You can use it just in the same day. Uh, and I'll just speed this all along here. Um, if you need to leave home during the stay at home period since March 16, 2020, list the following activities. Uh, and so, you know, we gave them the option, answer, you know, what you can. Uh, essential trips, outdoor activities, medical needs to go to work and to care for others uh, were noted as the top five. Uh, so obviously, if you're going out, you're making an essential visit or you just need to get out of the house. Uh, probably one too many Zoom meetings. And then also, you know, if you need to do any testing, you're allowed to do so. Um, now, this is interesting because if you selected any of the above activities since March, have you been using Bear Transit or AC Transit? So we've kind of got, you know, almost 60% of folks say that they have. Um, and the other 42% said no. And that's fine um, because the messaging that's come out is, you know, only use public transit for essential trips only. But now that, you know, folks are vaccinated, I would argue that folks are going to start to kind of rely on our services, um, especially when they come back to, to the office, or they're going to be scared enough that, you know, like folks are, may not be masked, it may not be clean enough. Um, I can assure you, I've been to more, I think I've committed to more A's games than I had been to going to the office in the last month on BART. And I can at least attest that, you know, BART is really, really trying their best and 95% of folks are masked. So for me personally, I am having a good experience um, now that things are actually opening up and more folks are taking transit. But back to this, um, you know, you're using transit, using our services to get around Berkeley. Um, if you're living in Berkeley, please indicate the likelihood of using Bear Transit. Um, you know, for uh, if you're living or coming to Berkeley, uh, using it for business or personal travel, um, the responses were basically, you know, there wasn't one clear majority. Um, and again, that's okay. Uh, you know, 42% said that they probably won't or won't, uh, you know, use Bear Transit uh, for any of their travel. And then you've got the rest that said, okay, they, you know, there might be indifferent. Um, they could be swayed one way or the other. Um, you know, uh, one other thing too is that when we had the uh, poll out, uh, when we had the survey out, um, many of the, I guess, many of the agencies except for BART weren't collecting fares. So AC Transit wasn't collecting fares uh, from March 31st through October 19th. And so when you're, you know, if you're taking the bus for free, chances are you're not really thinking about, oh, do I need my Clipper card? No, you're just like, well, let's see, let me try not to get COVID and I'll get on the bus uh, if I got to make these trips or if I need to go to Ber Berkeley Bowl, I'm going to be able to do this, that and the other. Maybe I can use Bear Transit to get around. Um, so we separated the question with AC Transit. Um, we've got the plurality of folks, 52% that said that it's very likely that they, they have been taking AC transit, uh, for business and personal travel. Um, you know, the other 47% basically were saying, okay, well, you know, given, have the chance I might, uh, um, and then since, uh, and of course, this is other changes, but over the course of the shelter in place period, has UC Berkeley PNT effectively communicated parking and uh, other changes information to you during the pandemic? What this means is, have we, you know, sent appropriate notices? Have we sent out, uh, you know, items? In you know, this is kind of one of the difficulties of being on the campus, where there's fifty five thousand people at any one given time. And we have to make sure that, you know, we have the most accurate information. We have to put it on our website uh, because, you know, trying to pick off different uh, departments isn't necessarily that easy. Um, however, if we have stuff online, you know, folks uh, can always visit the website uh, because we've had a COVID page since March uh, 2020. We've had updates as we go along, you know, service changes, everything else. And so we try to be as proactive as possible to making sure that, you know, you're well connected, or at least you have the information. Uh, because I, for one, would want to make sure that we have everything updated. And I try to make sure that everyone, every one of you guys are aware of all the changes. 
And so, you know, there's no one big difference one way or the other uh, with the way that, you know, communicating changes either we have been or we haven't you know it, it's kind of a wild card um and then you know we asked them like what's the best way to communicate with you guys uh a lot of folks said email alerts and i know that you know we've probably gotten hundreds of thousands of emails in the last 400 days um and so we try to you know be very 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 cautious with sending emails uh to folks so that we don't overwhelm you but Again, you know, there's not much that we can really do. Uh, text message notifications. This is something that, you know, I flag uh, because, you know, could we have a text messaging system that, you know, you could opt in and then we could be able to kind of share out whatever updates that are going on, um, you know, there have been other things such as traditional newspapers, uh, social media, which is, you know, we keep that updated a lot. My interns have done a really good job uh, and making sure that we have flyers or posters on the bus. And so that will be kind of, you know, ways for us to improve. And as a result of this survey, or at least the opening of the survey, you know, we've improved our newsletter. So we now call it the Making Mobility Move newsletter, where uh, we update folks uh, usually not our permit holders, but those that are registered, um, you know, through like WageWorks or through uh, our Berkeley Moves uh, right matching uh, platform. Uh, we send this out every month just to kind of give folks updates as we go along um, and making sure that, you know, there's uh, definitive access um, and definitive updates. So we usually uh, update with town halls. We've been doing a lot of those. We've extended, you know, this was done in November. So we had, um, you know, I guess the football game or at least the football season that kind of materialized. Um you know, we were able to offer uh, work with AC Transit on marketing the uh, the mobile app, uh, bear transit service updates um, that we can now put on our website as well. COVID uh, alerts too. Um, you know, like what are our requirements? They done. You know, the graphics that that the interns have done are really really well done, uh, so that we can make it visually appealing um, and at least kind of welcoming from our side. Uh, then we asked some kind of serious questions. You know, what level of risk does the COVID-19 pose to you when you're riding transit? Um, you know, 40% said that there's an elevated risk, um, even though I will say this, the signs have said that, you know, it's relatively safe as long as you're masked up and you keep your conversations to a minimum. Uh, and, you know, the circulation and the flow of the buses uh, really help, uh, you know, kind of move the air around and hopefully, you know, from the droplets and, and moving it out to the to the open space and away from the bus. Uh, there is some moderate risk. So, you know, we all of us recognize that uh, our risk tolerance is up to the individual. And so what we find out is that, um, you know, these are all valid, like, you know, the sliver of folks that said that there are no risks probably read the CDC arguments, but who's to say, who's to say we didn't really, you know, forward that through. Um, but we did ask about, you know, we want you to be safe. And so what do you, what do you want from us as far as like our bear transit services? What do you want as far as like requiring, uh, what are the, some of the requirements uh, that the CDC and the FTEA had been pushing out? How can we be able to share that? So we've been requiring face coverings, um, you know, increased ventilation with the windows, uh, sanitation, sanitization of high touch areas, uh, restricted seating. So we do have um, passenger capacity limits, additional buses if we've got the space and we've got the funds for it, all of the above, rear door boarding. Um, you know, we gave them the opportunity to kind of answer how they feel uh, that we can be able to do on our end since we're responsible for the buses and we're responsible for not only our drivers, but also the passengers that use it. Um, then we left it up to everyone else on, you know, suggesting any improvements that PT could implement uh, or change regarding bear transit and parking. 
Um, and so, you know, we've got a wide swath of answers. Um, I've got the raw data, but, you know, a couple of the things that we've noticed was uh, the cleanly, cleanliness of the buses, uh, maintaining some level of current service, better communication from our end. So we have, um, you know, up, we can push out updates to next bus. We can push out updates to the transit app. We can push updates that I think get flagged by Google and Apple Maps and like newsletters. Um, day parking and short-term parking. That was another thing that was majorly pushed out as a result of uh, COVID and the shelter in place. Uh, we started to kind of focus away from, uh, I guess, you know, monthly permits where you pay like $115, $120 a month to $10 to $14 a day. Well, at least now it's, it, you know, it's uh, you know, some average that's significantly lower because we recognize folks aren't going to be coming into the office five days a week. So what's the best way that we can accommodate for that? We can switch to weekly, monthly, daily permits, depending on uh, the needs. Dedicated commuter parking. Um, you know, uh, uh, the one of the big questions is, um, you know, could you be able to carpool or vanpool? Uh, short answer is yes. You, again, it comes down to your risk tolerance, and it also comes down to how much you trust the other person. Uh, if you guys are, you know, if, if your spouse or partner works at the university, I mean, you're going to probably be in that pool in that bubble anyway, um, and that you guys can split your permits. Um, but the one thing that we've noticed over the course of the last four years, we've only had a handful of like um, commuter parking for carpools, priority carpool parking spaces. Um, and we're looking to expand those uh, for the fall of 2021. So, you know, we, we are being res um, responsive to that. Uh, frequency of coverage of night safety shuttles, that's going to be critical anyway, um, because safety, again, is of the utmost importance. More Hill Line service for non-LBNL members. Um, you know, we, at one point we did offer a 15 minute uh, perimeter, not a perimeter, uh, I think we, at one point we did offer 15 minute Hill Line service temporarily before COVID. Um, there's also AC Transit 65 that serves the hill. Um, however, we are working with AC Transit to make sure that they are addressing like weekend travel uh, since our shuttles only work five days a week. The night safety shuttles work operate seven days a week. And the 65, which normally works seven days a week, is currently operating only on weekdays because of dramatically low uh, ridership. So we're kind of working to advocate getting some uh, level of service back. Uh, and then I sent this, uh, you know, the, the responses for AC Transit were much longer. Um, and as a result, we have, um, you know, kind of categorized it in, in these forms here, where you've got the reduction of service. So it's kind of like, can we get AC Transit back to pre-pandemic levels, uh, more reliable service? Um, you know, I joke around, you're only as fast as the idiot driving the Uber in front of you. No offense to any Uber or Lyft drivers on this call. Uh, however, because of Uber and Lyft, that has actually been one of the causes to why we have gotten, um, you know, bus speeds have been ridiculously slow. In the event that your buses are slow, what happens is, is that it takes you longer to get to your destination. And the longer it takes you to get to your destination, that really impacts the schedule negatively to the degree where in order for you to actually maintain uh, a headway or a frequency of like every 15 minutes, if you have Uber or Lyft cars or, you know, trucks blocking the way, slowing your buses down, getting to your destination longer, the district has to add more buses. You add more buses, you add more money because that's like $200 a functional service hour. Um, and so that actually hurts them. So what we want is to actually have better service in the way of improving bus speeds. Uh, the city of Berkeley is working on a couple of different projects uh, on the campus, uh, on Southside, on Dana, as well as Telegraph to help promote uh, you know, more faster trips, meaning can I get you from south side of campus to downtown Oakland faster on Route 6 than what you've been exposed to before? Uh, more rider information. 
uh, this has been kind of a, a, a sore point, uh, mainly because, um, you know, the communication with transit agencies, and I speak from experience, is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. Or, you know, just being able to not only tell your, your, your passengers that uh, if there's a detour or notice on a route, um, stop closure, schedule changes, um, that has to be communicated out to your your folks more effectively and a lot more, um, you know, definitively. And so you want to be able to, um, you know, not only visualize any stop changes and where you need to go, but also just to be very clear. I remember when I first started working here uh, in April 2017, uh, half the campus was closed down because Ann Coulter threatened to come onto campus. And that shut down Telegraph. Uh, the Telegraph and it also shut down Bancroft. And as a result, we had to move our buses and we also had to move AC Transit buses, but no one knew what was going on. And so what we had to do was I went along Bancroft, told everyone who was waiting for a bus that they needed to go to the Berkeley BART station um, because you couldn't leave campus necessarily on bus because all the streets were blocked off and everyone was working on a detour. They didn't communicate that to the students. So I had to go out there. Um, you know, if there's a major long-term detour, EC Transit could very well do that. They could very well offer that as an alternative for folks to get around, um, you know, a detour or a change. Like, you know, the level of communication can always be improved. Again, communicating more effectively, that's the next point. Um, and so it's like, if there's an immediate alert, uh, the mobile app, HC Transit rolled out a mobile app. They're also on the transit app. Um, they can, you know, send out and push out messages should anything arise. Um, and then also following on social media. Uh, mandating social distancing, um, there is talk about reducing the social distancing from six feet to three feet, um, hopefully increasing the amount of capacity on the buses. The biggest challenge that we're going to find now is that uh, a lot of folks are getting passed up because the buses cannot be able to pick them up. Uh, and so if you reduce the capacity from six feet social distancing to three, you'll get more people, hopefully that won't require more drivers and more buses uh, to get folks going through not merging 51A and 51B. Um, depending on how long you've been on this campus, the 51 used to be a single route from Fruitvale in Oakland all the way through uh, uh, the middle of Alameda, through downtown uh, Oakland, all the way up through Rock Ridge, the campus, and then out towards the Amtrak station on the west side. That was a 13 mile route that was extremely unreliable. And so, as a result, AC Transit had broken up the 51 A and B at Rockridge. Um, there has been talk about realigning a lot of the service for fiscal year 22, in which that um, it could be, you know, reuniting this service. Uh, it's been 11 years, but um, studies show that the longer your bus route is, the more unreliable it's going to be. And so we want to try and uh, avoid that. Other, um, and of course, you got updates on Google Maps and Transit app. Um, you know, fare integration is the other point. I was rambling about that earlier. Um, you know, if you're coming in from County Connection to Bark, you shouldn't be penalized for that travel. Um, you know, uh, the other thing is we found that more people were driving to the campus, uh, you know, in the last year before COVID than it was when I first started. And that's through no fault of our own. Those are externalities such as housing, um, access and mobility to get to, you know, the campus on time uh, in which that, you know, 27 transit agencies, different fare products, you're penalized. There's no really good competition versus driving. And again, if you have, say, a mobility issue or, you know, or, or rather if you have children, you know, we're also cognizant of that. So we can't say, let's ban all parking, let's ban all cars, because that's going to impact a lot of people that may need it. You also have essential employees that need to come into campus, you know, at various times of the day. So that can be, you know, very different. So we have to balance the parking, but also be good stewards of public transit. So that's basically my, the last slide here. Um, as and so you know there's my contact information um you know feel free to pester me at any time 
Um, I'm happy to talk with any department about what we intend on changing for the fall, um, or at least when the, you know, the return to campus comes back. Uh, you know, pt.berkeley.edu is our primary website. We update that. Uh, our staff does a really good job. They're on, some of them are even on the call now. Um, and, you know, making sure that we do our best to make sure that everyone's updated. But what I want to really focus on is the big changes that we are going to anticipate uh, when we get moving back. And I would like for you all to have confidence in the public transit system so that, you know, you can at least in addition to maybe flex scheduling, you know, try transit maybe one or two days out of the days that you actually have to come to campus. So uh, that's about it. I will, um, you know, cut out of here and uh, field the uh, field the floor with any questions. Well, um, I can invite everybody to buy your reaction, uh, have the clap emoji and, or um, show your screen and uh, thank Dave for this presentation. Um, we wanted to, and that's perfect timing, by the way, look at that. That was like 45 minutes, like to the dot. That was great. And so we wanted to open things up for questions. And again, for those of you who have not attended a CAN session via Zoom, um, you know, we, it's your choice whether you want to use the raise hand feature. So, uh, the presenter can call on you and you can, and you're welcome to unmute and, and speak it out, or you can, uh, type it into the chat. Um, so wanted to open the floor for questions and comments. There are no dumb questions. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer them and be of good service to you all. Hi, Dave, this is Alfred. Um, just kind of curious, uh, you know, so this survey was, you know, I think a few months back, are you getting the sense that, um, you know, you know, as people are getting vaccinated now, are you getting the feeling like this? information still must be valid or do you, do you and it's probably an anecdotal now at this point but I, i'm kind of curious what you're saying that's a really good question i think the big difference between what we've seen uh when we did the um when we did the survey last year and now is going to be vastly different um and i feel that this is still a good harbinger for how people felt about transit then um and it's a slow burn because uh, it, it, as most of you noticed, is that, you know, California had a very bumpy uh, rollout of the vaccine. And so, you know, now we're smooth sailing, more or less. Um, and now, you know, uh, BART has actually reported over 60,000 riders on the system, uh, which is a big milestone, at least for them right where okay folks are vaccinated they feel a little more confident um and then they're also taking you know transit to where they need to go i lamented i went to more a's games than i've gone to work uh gone to the campus and you know i for one you know notice this uptick as well and so what i plan on doing in the fall is that we're going to probably do this survey again um i think it will be interesting to see where we are um, in the fall of 2020 versus where we are going to be in the fall of 2021, uh, especially as our commutes get figured out, you know, our, uh, you know, our options and decision making when it comes to the economics of it all evolve, um, especially with gas prices, especially with service frequency actually ramping up. Uh, BART will be going to 15 minute service in September, uh, away from the 30 minutes. Um, you know, AC Transit will be going to about 84% of pre-COVID levels, at least 84% in August. We're trying to get some weekend service in the Berkeley Hills uh, sooner than that. Um, and I owe somebody an email soon. Um, but at the same time, I think it's a valid question where, you know, the combination of, you know, anecdotal data plus what we've already seen, and then what we'll see, you know, also is permit sales. Um, you know, with the release of, uh, you know, you can be able to buy your permits online. We've been offering that for years, but now if you offer it online through our portal, you can be able to use pay by phone app to buy your daily permits um, for both employees and for students. So, you know, we can offer these things bits and pieces so that the individual can make the monetary decision of spending $10 for a permit plus any on-road cost versus paying maybe 750 round trip on BART and maybe one other transit agency. Thank you. 
and I was unaware about the, you know, paying online for the permits. Uh, I had been schlepping all the way down University Avenue to pick up uh, past in person. So thank you for all looking at that option. Yeah, and, and we're operating on limited hours uh, anyway. So we definitely want to limit the amount of quote unquote unnecessary conduct. I mean, we love to see you all, but we also want you to be safe. So, we're, you know, going towards touchless or, you know, limited face-to-face -face interaction, we have to provide a feasible alternative for those who can. Thank you for such an incredible um, um, research. I, like, there, there are so many parts to this, you know, puzzle and um, it's it's incredible. And, I, and by the way, I like your Jeopardy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and, uh, and and th there are a few questions that we have uh, on the chat. Um, uh, there is one from Amy um, who worked at UC Irvine and there was a, a good program for people um, who would normally take uh, the bus or other um, alternative forms of transportation to campus. And, um, but could they, um, could we institute a program where um, there would be a certain number of hours uh, for mm -hmm. part? Um, did I uh, phrase this well, Amy? Uh, feel free to jump in and um, and also add. Um, I think uh, I can interpret the question if Amy doesn't want to. Uh, is that you know there there at one point we did offer and we have offered uh, what's called an alternative transportation F permit. Um, in which Denny, who is our uh, revenue manager, kind of explained in the chat, uh, where we offer non-monthly permit holders the chance to pick up 48 passes in a given uh, fiscal year. So from July 1 to June 30th, you can be able to buy up to 48 passes at the time at $6. We are changing it uh, for fiscal year 22, um, in which that you can be able to park you know, during that time, just put, you know, scratch off the day that you're using it, throw it on the dash, you're done. And so you can, you know, for lack of a better word, hoard 48 passes uh, and be able to use that. Um, we are starting to kind of move away from that and offer daily permits um, so that if you need to come to campus on the day that you opt to, you'll just have to pay the standard rate for the, based on the permit that you'll use. Um, the, and the daily permits, won't force you to pay, you know, $120, $150 up front, but instead you just go piece by piece depending on the individual's needs. Okay, thank you. That was very, very helpful. We have some additional questions uh, about daily pass uh, that was bought pre-pandemic. Uh, will we still be able to use these? Yes. Yeah, I still have scratchers from fiscal year 19 that I haven't used and uh, those are still valid. I just need to actually find them and put them in the car, but I probably will be hoarding some passes anyway. <laughs> As while supplies last. Sorry, Denny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there is uh, one more question about uh, whether um, oh, I guess that's a question for, for Danny. Um, I know Heather had well, asked a question. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I wanted to ask a question. Um, and in fact, this is as much for you as everybody else who's here. So I just wanted to invite people. You can either like unmute um, if you've got opinions about this um, or write in the chat. So. Dave, I really, one thing I've been pondering a lot is your slide about the likely or not likely, if you're living in Berkeley, indicate the likelihood of using, and you had a separate question for Bear Transit from AC Transit. And, I'm, and you know, like, I, it seemed to me, for those of us who've done similar kinds of surveys about figuring out, do we keep the same level of service? Do we need to up or change it? Or do we need to decrease it? I wondered about your choice of using the five part likely to use neutral, not likely, as opposed to um, like, what would it take to get you to use bear transit instead of, right? Or, right. so I, I wanted to know a little bit, and I think I, I recognize we're using SurveyMonkey um, or Qualtrics for your, um, those pie chart things. 
Well, yeah, this this one was actually done on Google Forms. Oh, Google uh, Forms, okay. Because uh, we've uh, what we've noticed um, is that my interns are really good at data science, uh, or at least you know being able to transfer from spreadsheets to graphs. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually took some of the, the essence of the survey is actually uh, from my former employer back in Chicago. Uh, sorry, there's a protesting pit bull outside. That's my uh, my little fur child. Um, and so we pulled it from, you know, their survey, which basically explains like the use and frequency and how do you feel about taking transit? How do you feel about your safety? Um, if you've used it, how do you feel like, have you used it? Have you not? Why do you, you know, not so much the why, but like just the how and just kind of standardizing that. I feel that once we now start heading into uh, the second phase of the survey, which will, we'll, like I said, we'll do it with a new intern in um, in the fall. How does you know what will what will it take you uh, to actually take transit? Um, you know, and we'll get various answers too because um, you know, like how can we be able to provide A, B, C, D, and E? But from you know, it will be good to hear the feedback uh, whether or not we can provide that because obviously money doesn't grow on trees and I wish it did um, that, you know, say that, okay, well, you know, we've, we've offered more service. Um, you know, I can leverage this with AC transit because the students pay four and a half million dollars a year for their bus pass. My expectation is that they want four and a half million dollars worth of bus service and the employees take advantage of that because they could very well use that same, um, same pass or, or rather the same essence of the past. It's not the same, it's two different pots of money. So I'll stop talking. Well, I guess one, one question I had was, especially given that you just told Alfred, you're thinking of redoing this. Whenever, for me, whenever neutral is like the dominant answer, I always feel like maybe there's something up with that question, right? Like, yeah. cause that, you know, here's the thing, like I, I found it so striking that just by extending you, you grew by tenfold the number of people who took the time to answer this. So mm -hmm. I feel like you had enough, you had enough opinions to answer all of this, but this one question yeah. got like the hugest number of neutral. And I just wondered, yeah. you know, every time we ask people, tell us what that ups our workload in terms of trying to analyze at the same time, is that what's going to be most helpful? And so I'm just curious for other people too, whether that kind of, for me, big neutral answers is just a, an interesting flag. And I wondered if you would repeat that question to see if it changes or you might tweak it for the next time. I would argue that I would, well, for me personally, I think I can be able to tweak it where we can incorporate the logic in Google Forms, where if you've answered, you know, very likely, likely, not likely, very unlikely, I could just centralize the neutral one and actually say, you know, what will take you to get back on the transit? Conversely, what we could do is offer a question on the side that says, okay, if you are living in Berkeley, um, you know, we can maybe perform a cross tab where if you've answered likely, what are your reasons why? And then we can categorize it as such. Um, and so we wanted to keep this as, as, as kind of direct as possible without doing too much. Um, and, and I think it would be good probably with the next survey that we do, um, you know, kind of look more in depth, like what is the, what do you think are the barriers to your access? What do you think are going to be the barriers uh, for you to be able to leverage, you know, not only AC transit, but other forms of alternative transit, what's going to get you out of your car? So that could be a separate question um, in which that, you know, like maybe you have a car, we, you know, my, I have a two car household. Um, and so how can I be able to get around if I don't have um, you know, transit, like what will get me back on the transit? Uh, for me personally, more service, um, you know, but your mileage may vary depending on the other units or the other employees or students. Great, thank you. Um, and then uh, Denny plugged in, um, you know, the wage works, uh, employees get a $10 uh, transit subsidy provided by us uh, when you order at least $30 worth of uh, transit funds. Uh, the cutoff for the next month's uh, wage works is on um, uh, uh, 8, 8 p.m. on Monday. Um, and so uh, we'll, you know, Denny will probably drop the, the link in the chat too. 
but you know, we want to make sure that everyone has options too. So that's just, uh, you know, there's our financial incentive. And right now we're just kind of stuck because we normally have like a employee easy pass, but we suspended that, um, you know, for the foreseeable future, because unfortunately, uh, when everyone was sent back home, uh, we lost roughly 90, about 85 to 90% of our revenue. And so we had to cut a lot of, uh, we had to shift, we had to pivot. A lot of our service had been uh, changed and, you know, merged and, you know, moved around. Yeah, thank, and thank you, Denny, for, for uh, putting all this great info in the chat. And, and uh, I'm also, it's nice to see so many different kinds of uh, transportation options that everybody is sharing that uh, they had. And so um, one other question I had for you, Dave, is you mentioned that part of the results of the survey was uh, tweaking and updating the parking transportation newsletter. Is, is your plan now to have a regular monthly newsletter no matter what? Um, are you still experimenting with that kind of like unidirectional? Because uh, the other thing that struck me is how many different constituencies you serve. I mean, you have such a wide range. So what what's going to be your plan going forward for your newsletter? So we we send out a constant contact uh, newsletter every month. So we've been pushing that out since October. We started kind of playing around with it in October, and then we just kind of ran with it. My intern, uh, Erica, um, you know, who is graduating, but she'll be back uh, as a grad student. Uh, she kind of led the charge with the, like, how can we be able to do, be consistent? Uh, and so as a result, what we've done is that we've sent, you know, monthly uh, emails to everyone. Um, you know, we try to be as consistent. So, you know, without being too much, um, you know, we try not to overwhelm everyone. Folks, some folks, you know, unsubscribe and that's fine too. Um, here's our latest, um, uh, I put it in the chat, that's our latest newsletter. Um, and basically what we've done is kind of say, hey, it's the end of the semester, best of luck with finals. Uh, we've updated with like bike to wherever month, uh, the class pass forum that we held for the students, uh, AC transit talks. That's gonna be another thing that, you know, if you're not satisfied, uh, with how AC Transit Service has been operating, or rather to kind of put, put it on their radar to improve for uh, summer and fall of 2021. They are doing transit talks based on the class pass form that we held, where you have senior leadership uh, kind of explain the state of AC Transit and then answer questions from the audience. Uh, they had one yesterday for Berkeley. They will have another one for Berkeley, Kensington, uh, El Cerrito, and Points North um, on the 13th. And so I, I'll draw that to attention and put that in the chat as well. Um, and so it's just basically saying, hey, here are your options. Here are some of the updates that we do have, um, you know, like, like what are, you know, Clipper app is now available on your phone. You can be able to switch over to that. Um, you know, we also offer, or rather MTC is also offering Clipper Start cards, which is basically, you know, a severely reduced uh, fare card uh, based on your qualifications. And if you, you know, live in the Bay Area, if you make a certain amount under the, uh, under the poverty threshold, you qualify for, you know, 20 or 50% off your fares, depending on what agency, right? And we want to be able to push that out so that folks can be able to take advantage of that. Uh, EC Transit has all door boarding. We want to make sure that you're aware of that, um, as well as, uh, you know, the mobile app, and then, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, if you're returning to campus, we want to make sure that you have options um, and we're going to start repopulating this because I was under the naive of impression that we were going to come back uh, for fall 2020. That never happened. So what do we do instead? Uh, this page has been up since, you know, the beginning of, you know, of this uh, shelter in place. And so, you know, we put a section where you can sign up for the updates, you can bike to campus. Uh, if you need to find a bike shop, uh, you know, where do you go? 
Um, we did offer a bike share program. It's more, it's kind of temporarily in flux right now. Uh, telecommuting policy that we've pulled from HR. Um, you know, part of the Sustainable Transportation Working Group, which is UC wide, we were able to kind of normalize how uh, commuter uh, telecommute can be done on each of the individual campuses, as long as there's, you know, some kind of focus on like equity and how can you balance, uh, uh, you know, attention to everyone else, or at least how can you be able to uh, balance for, you know, job specific and specific job codes and things like that. Great, thank you. Um, well, I, I want to, I mean, we usually block out an hour and a half for these sessions. So of course, people are welcome to continue to ask questions, but I know some people are dropping off because they need to leave. So I just wanted to, uh, first of all, formally thank you again for this presentation. Um, I also wanted to plug um, next month's presentation for those of you who joined later will be from Cal Student Central, Luis Rodriguez. The director will, will report on, uh, you know, qualitative surveys about their service and, and what kinds of uh, changes they plan to make because of them. And I also wanted to invite anyone who, if you're here and you'd like to present, or you know someone doing great work on campus, um, there are a couple ways. One is you can email us at can at berkeley.edu. And, and like we're, this presentation is because Dave was at a few months ago and he said, I have something. Um, and we also have a, a, an open Padlet where people are just, some are brainstorming things, um, some are adding details. And so uh, I've put the, the link in our chat. Um, you're welcome to sort of go on there and either put a thumbs up to something that sounds good or write something yourself. Um, and is there anything else that uh, anyone wants to add or any upcoming things that people think would be of interest to CAN members? Great, I guess we can stop the recording then. And um, 